Welcome back. I want to introduce my next guest as someone who's taken on and won a huge victory for free speech against the academic establishment, have done everything they can to silence her. Dr Joanna Howes, a professor of law at the University of Adelaide, and she's been forced to take her employer to the Fair Work Commission after six investigations into her research on abortion that were launched in response to complaints. Now, just keep in mind, one of these complaints was instigated via a sex industry activist who's got a TikTok account dedicated to producing regular content attacking Professor Howe. Now, while she has been cleared in each and all investigations, her fights cost her close to $100,000 in legal fees. In her latest win, an attempt by the university to force this former Rhodes Scholar to take remedial research classes, her employer has backed down and agreed they won't. And the quotes are they won't require Professor Howe to comply with the corrective actions and that they'll take no further action on this matter. Law Professor Joanna Howe joins me now. Well, Joanna, I, I'm in awe of your bravery. I, I read what you write. I listen to what you say. I think you've been to hell and back in your fight for academic freedom. To me, the issue seems to be about the topics you research, the uncomfortable findings you make, rather than the quality of your work. Is that fair? Is that what's driving these attacks on you? I think that's right, Peter. So the, and all of the complaints, the six complaints, have not come, none of them have come from my students about anything that I'm doing in the classroom. And none of them have been about the substance of my research. They've been claims of misrepresentation of facts from people who have an ideological opposition to what I'm saying. And the idea of a university is built around academic freedom. And these activists don't like that I'm bringing out through my social media, through Instagram and Facebook, where I report at Dr Joanna Howe, I disseminate my research on abortion and I have uncovered some really horrific things, things that make most of us squirm. You know, the fact that in Australia, abortion is legal up until birth. The fact that certain states and territories allow a newborn baby who survives an abortion to be left to die without a medical right to care. These are deeply uncomfortable truths and the activists don't like that I'm having the reach that I have. On Instagram I've had and Facebook, I've, I've reached over 5 million Australians in two years. And, you know, I think the only way that they know to make me stop is to cancel me. And what they have done is weaponise mm. my university's complaints mechanisms against me. I know from government it's very hard to get statistics on abortion. It's like they go out of their way, the various state health departments and, and Medicare and all the systems, not to collect the data. They don't want it to be brought together in any reasonable way. Now, that's not, that's not an argument to change the rules per se. I know there's been long debates at a state level about the laws in this country, but you're raising a very uncomfortable truth that babies can be born in a hospital and given care if the intention of the mum is to have a live birth. But if the intention is for that to be an abortion, even though the fetus is viable, if it's born alive, it is left to die, that's not something we want to talk about, is it? It's not. And in certain states and territories, that is exactly what happens. So in South Australia, where I am based, I, I have fought alongside others to have born alive protection. And we have that protection in the law. A, a baby born alive after an abortion is treated no differently to any other baby. But in Queensland at the moment, that is not the case. And in Victoria, in those two states between 2010 and 2020, it was almost one baby a week was born alive after an abortion and left to die. And in 2022 in Queensland, there were 42 babies left in that position without a, a legal right to care. And, you know, I br have broken the stories of, you know, the um, unnamed mm -hmm. baby at Westmead Hospital. I encountered her coroner's report, the baby that was dumped in a bin while still breathing. And I broke that on my social media. I also broke the story of baby Xantha, a little baby girl born at 19 weeks. Now, she wasn't going to survive, but they shouldn't have dumped her in an empty hospital room and left her to die for seven minutes on a metal kidney dish. You know, she deserved to be treated with dignity, um, to be picked up and held. And, you know, these are the um, deeply uncomfortable things that I am bringing out. And one of the investigations against me was from an activist member of the public who saw my reel on Jessica Jane, a little baby girl who in 1998 was left to die for 80 minutes on a metal kidney dish without any care. 
I, I broke that story on my socials and, you know, it, it, it reached a lot of people. And this activist member of the public complained to my dean to say that I'd misrepresented facts. And my dean looked at the coronial report and looked at my video and she said, it's deeply uncomfortable watching, <laughs> watching your videos, but ultimately they're true. And so once again, I was cleared of that investigation. That's the point. I mean, as uncomfortable as these topics are, rather than shut you down, why don't they contest some of these issues? I, you know, the, the very fact that they want to silence you says to me, you've touched a nerve. How, how can people support you? Because I know this has cost Absolutely. you an enormous, yeah. and in a personal way, but I know it's also cost you financially. How can people support your fight? Thank you, Peter, and I appreciate you having me on the show because it has been an ordeal, but ultimately I felt that I had to fight back when the university, you know, forced corrective actions on me, despite the fact that I'd been cleared, I thought, well, I, my conscience doesn't allow me to just do your re-education. I have to fight back even though it's going to be a substantial cost and people have been very generous. Donations have been coming in to my legal fees and I, I'm very grateful for that. But one thing that I'm really determined to fight for is academic freedom and free speech in our country. The situation is dire. If you are someone researching in a controversial area, you are not protected by the university system because activists can weaponise the complaint system. And so on the screen is a QR code that will take you to my petition. It's an open letter to University Australia calling on them to develop a new system which would weed out vexatious and bad faith complaints. And it would mean that the situation that I've been through and many others go through through uh, those of us researching in controversial areas. We live in fear of these activists using our university systems against us. So that is an open letter that people can go to, they can co-sign. There's also a petition there to the federal government demanding protection for free speech for all Australians because no Australian should be afraid of losing their job because of something that they say. You're not wrong, Professor Howe. All credit to you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Well done in your win.